Come on, somebody shout glory in this place. <laughs> Praise God. I tell you what, there is nothing like coming into a place and preaching where there's golf involved. Come on. <laughs> I mean, you know, as a preacher, uh, you know, you say, well, all preachers golf. Yeah, well, the anointed ones do. <laughs> Amen. I, I, I actually live on the seventh tee of the golf course, and uh, I walk out my backyard, and I just hop on the seventh tee. And uh, how many know that the first two letters of golf and the first two letters of God are the same letters? Come on. All right, well. <laughs> if you have your Bibles with you, this afternoon, please turn with me to uh, uh, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, and we're going to get in the Word of God today. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the Word of God. I thank you that it's sharper than any two-edged sword. I thank you for the excellence upon your Word this morning. I thank you that you're speaking to the lives of your children, that we're rising up, and we're moving forward. I thank you for exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or even imagine. Holy Spirit, this morning, have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, and let's go down here to verse, verse 4. Now it says, where the word of a king is, where the word of a king is, there is is power. <laughs> I like that. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Now, Jesus is the king of kings. How many know you're the kings? Well, three of you. Well, you are the kings. Now, there are natural kings, and we have uh, kings that are in this earth, and he's king over them. But there is a royal priesthood, a holy nation. The children of Almighty God. I'm talking about the church. Come on. And, and, and he said he is the king of kings. And we have to begin to realize there's power. There's power in the word of a king. There's authority. When the king decrees the word of the living God, the whole kingdom has to line up with whatever he says. How many know when you speak the word of the living God, you've got the whole backing of the throne room of grace? Everything, glory be to God. Every promise in the Word of God is yes and amen. Now, there's over 3,500 promises in the Word of God. There's a promise with your name on it this afternoon. There's something so good, so big, so wonderful. How many know that God loves you? I said God loves you. And when you realize that God loves you, you're going to begin to get a hold of what His Word says. Now, I'm Jewish. My natural born father uh, is Jewish, brought up Jewish. And, 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 you know, we're just a little different than you. Praise God for you. We needed the Gentiles. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, wholesale, retail. And uh, <laughs> so we, uh, <laughs> when, when, when you brought up Jewish, you're just a little bit different. Uh, we're covenant minded. We're not thinking about, you know, just getting to heaven. Uh, most, uh, most Gentiles, just sheep trying to get by. <laughs> you know, we're just sheep trying to get by, waiting for some glad morning. Well, let me tell you something. Some glad morning is when you got saved. I said, some glad morning is when you got saved. And, and God's got something great with your name on it today. God's got something so wonderful. He's got what is called covenant. And when you realize that he made a covenant with you, then you begin to understand that it's not about getting to heaven. Now you get to go to heaven, calm down. Uh, <laughs> but it's about being born again. It's about becoming a child of God. If you're born again today, you're a child of God. If you're born again today, you're a king. Come on, somebody. Uh, God created man in his own image. How many know he is love? So he created you in the image of love. And so he created you to go forth in this earth. And it says in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 1, verse 26, that he created you for dominion. That you would go forth in this world. How many know it's time for you to take dominion of your life? 
It's time to take the cities for God. It's time to take this country back. Come on. It's time to rise up in the word of the living God. Just rise up in faith. Faith cometh by hearing. I like that slogan. Glory to God. Uh, Faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God. We have a covenant But we've got to be in that covenant and realize that it's not just about, you know, someday we'll get our act together. No, you have been made a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. (laughs) Isn't that good news? Old things passed away. Behold, all some things, all things have become new. You know, every morning it says his mercies are new. Every morning, the Lord's mercies are new. He gives you a clean slate every day. Every morning, He says, rise up and win. Rise up and and, and bring glory to God. Rise up and be my children. Rise up and go forth and speak the words of God which have power. Glory to God. Turn with me over here to Luke. And uh, Luke, uh, over here, New Testament. Luke chapter... uh, uh, four, Luke chapter 4, and uh, let's go down to verse 32. Hallelujah. How many love the Word of God? Luke chapter 4, verse 32. And they were all astonished at Jesus' doctrine or words, for His Word was with power. How many know that Jesus words that came out of his mouth were with power. How many know that the word Christian means Christ-like? So we're supposed to go forth with words of power. We're supposed to go forth with his word that has power today to overcome. How many know you are not going under, you're going over? You're more than a conqueror. You're an overcomer in this world by His Word. His Word has made you more than conquerors. You're rising up in this Word and you're rising up as His children, going forth and making a difference. Come on. I might preach here in the golf place. Come on, somebody. (laughs) Glory to God. Uh, God wants us to know who we are and Jesus is our example. And He spoke with power. Great. And in the synagogue, there was a a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, you Jesus of Nazareth? Are you come to destroy us? I know you, who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold your peace. Come out of him. And when the devil had had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commands unclean spirits, and they come out. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. God wants you to speak His Word. He wants you to rise up and speak His Word. Uh, It doesn't matter what you're going through today. There's an answer in the Word of God. Uh, The Word is good news. God's got something good with your name on it. You just got to dig it out. Because there's a promise right there. And that promise, how many know the Word of God is alive? I said the Word of God is alive. It's the only book that's on the planet that's alive. It has DNA. Every promise has ingredients. Every promise uh, is, is, glory to God, is seed. We know that from the parable of the sower. When you get a hold of a promise, in the promise, that promise is alive. In the promise is the DNA. If you see the promise, you're seeing hope. If you're seeing what's in the seed, you're seeing the end result. If you're seeing what God has to say about it, it's already in the seed. How many know if you bought a, a packet of tomato seeds, uh, there are no tomatoes in that packet? Now, don't get upset. They're in the seeds. Amen. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, you'll get some tomato seeds. And, and uh, uh, the only reason you know they are tomato seeds unless you're just a real good farmer and you know what they look like, is because of the word that is on the package. 
How many know you believe the word that is written concerning tomatoes? And you will plant those seeds and you will believe that you'll get tomatoes. Come on. And so the word is like that. The word is seed, it says. And the Word uh, is alive. It has DNA. Uh, When you see into the seed, you will see what is already there. It may not happen yet. It may not be, well, hope. If 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 it's hope, it hasn't happened yet. It's hope, glory to God. It's the dream. It's the thing you're waiting on. It's the miracle. It's the healing in your body or whatever it is that you're desiring. God has already said it is done, it is paid for, it is a covenant. My precious promises are yes and amen. And if you see within the seed, you're seeing by faith. God says, see the end from the beginning. Look at the end result. See what I see and speak as a king and decree what I say about it. Not what the world says about it. Not what everybody else is talking. But just be a word person. Come on. You speak the word. The word is alive. In the promise of the seed is everything you would ever need to go forth in this world. Every need is met. Glory to God. I I mean, you know, uh, if if it says tomatoes, there's tomatoes in that packet. Glory to God. Now, uh, if you you took that packet and you got carrots, how many know uh, that was man putting the word on there and he messed up, but God doesn't mess up. What he said he will do, he will surely do. God's a good God. Hallelujah. And he loves you. Well, Brother Baxter, I just think that, you know, it's not about all that. I just believe it's about getting to heaven. Well, then you're going to miss out on bringing glory to him while you're here and that you're not realizing you have a purpose and a destiny. You have a purpose on this earth. You were born for such a time as this, and God's trying to put His Word in you because He is the Word made flesh, and you are the flesh made Word. We're being changed, renewing our minds according to the reading of the Word, conforming ourselves into His image, and then when we speak, we're going to speak the words of God and not our words. We're going to speak the oracles of God, and people are going to begin to see Jesus in us. We we don't need to be going around with hate. Come on, somebody. We need to go forth, for they shall know us by our love. Love one another. Meet people's needs. Pray for one another. How many know you you can build a church and you can do some great things if you'll just begin to love on somebody? Uh, you, you, can, you can win this whole town for Jesus if you just stop uh, in Walmart and say, is there anything I can pray with you about? How I many know oh, there's hurting people all around us? And you can speak the word of the living God. God has made you his mouthpiece. And as you speak his word, come on. As you speak his word, you are spreading the love of Jesus all over the place because his message is love. I said his message is love. Well, I believe it's a message of sin. We need to, we need to pray, uh, preach more on sin. Let me just tell you something right now. People know what sin is. People are trying to find out how to get out of it. Preach the answer. Speak the answer. Speak the good news. Tell them how they don't, they, they, they don't have to, uh, you know, fuss about it anymore. They don't have to go, you know, running here and there, that the good news of Jesus Christ has made them free. Hallelujah. There's something good with your name on it right now. The enemy's defeated. Jesus, his mercy is new every morning. There's a clean slate. There's something good today. This is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. There is something so wonderful, so glorious. This week, come on, somebody. You're about to speak that this week is the greatest week. This week is something. You're going to be in the right place at the right time. And you're going to start doing great exploits in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, when I pray for people, and I've prayed, I've been in ministry 35 years now. When I pray for people, uh, I don't know what I haven't seen. I've seen blind eyes open, deaf ears, cancers, tumors shrink and disappear, goiters shrink in my hand as I'm praying. 
Five different people uh, clinically dead, raised from the dead. Come on. How many know that God is still in the miracle work in business? We have one covenant called the New Testament. That covenant is filled with promises. And the blood of Jesus paid for every single one. Now, I want you to know, uh, many times people will say, uh, well, you know, uh, uh, the day of miracles is over. Well, let me tell you something. If miracles are over, then salvation's over. It's the same covenant. We've got to begin to be covenant-minded. Not just heaven-bound, but realize we have a purpose. You are the children of God. You are the church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. Quit allowing the devil to hold you down, tell you why you're so horrible, how bad you are. No, that was yesterday. Today is a new beginning. God's about to do great things. Come on. God's about to do exceeding abundantly above anything you could ask or even imagine. God's trying to show you great things. Turn with me over here to the uh, book of Judges. Book of Judges, chapter 14, we come across Samson. Judges, chapter 14, verse 5. Then when Samson... Now, how many know Samson was the Arnold Schwarzenegger of the Bible? <laughs> Amen. Uh, you know, how many know Jesus was the rock? The rock's an actor, okay? All right, anyway. Uh, so, <laughs> it says, uh, Then Samson went down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath, and behold, a young lion roared against him. In other words, came out to attack him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon Samson, and he tore that cat apart. <laughs> I tell you what, he tore that lion, he ripped him in two. I would have paid to see that. I mean, that had been better than WWF. Come on. Uh, <laughs> glory to God. It's about time you realize the power of the Holy Ghost. It's about time you realize the anointing that's on you. The same power. That raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Glory to God. There's no weapon formed against you that's going to prosper. Whoo, God's on your side. If God before you, the Lord before you, who can be against you? About time you realize you got, you got Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I used to be years ago. I was uh, in Hollywood and uh, I, I, just, I was running from God. He had already called me into the ministry and I, I was in uh, Rocky Three, and I'll never forget this. I, was in, I did about 31 movies. I did voiceovers for Walt Disney, uh, did commercials and all, all those sort of things. And uh, I'll never forget when I was doing Rocky Three, I walked in there, and uh, there was Sylvester Stallone, and the guy is short. I mean, he's like up to here on me, and he's wearing lifts. I mean, I'm thinking I could take this guy. Uh, <laughs> you know, his name's Sylvester. Okay, come on. And, and in that movie, uh, in that movie, there was uh, uh, Hulk Hogan. He played Thunderlips. I don't know how they got that name. But anyway, uh, he played uh, Thunderlips. And, and Hulk Hogan, was, he was at his prime. He was all steroids. I mean, uh, buffed out. Uh, <laughs> he was <laughs> pumped up. And, and so uh, I'll never forget, they feed you good on movies. My goodness, every couple hours they feed you. And they bring in these catering trucks. And they don't feed you junk. They feed you you know, four or five course meals and, and, and a lot of times people thought I was in acting. No, I was just eating. It was, it was good. And a lot of people think now when I travel all over the country and I'm, I'm uh, going to churches, I'm actually just eating and then I speak too. Uh, but I'll never forget, they put these uh, tables, these, uh, you know, just, just picnic benches out there. And so I went uh, and sat down at one of the picnic benches to eat and and, and out of nowhere, Hulk Hogan sits down on the same bench right next to me. And I'm, I'm almost falling off the bench. His, his arm was the size of my leg. He said, could you get me the salt? Yes, anything. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> there's something intimidating about somebody like that. And so I grabbed him the salt and he said, thank you, buddy. And I'm thinking, I'm his buddy. Glory to God. I'm thinking, come on, anybody going to get after me? I got a buddy here. <laughs> Amen. 
Well, how many know you got Jesus, your older brother? When the enemy starts coming your way, oh, hey, you won't come my way? You're going to have to deal with this. Come on. Jesus is bigger than anything. His name is more powerful. When you speak the name of the living God, when you speak the name of Jesus, every demon shall bow his knee. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You've got you to just finally one day settle it once and for all that this book, the Bible, is truth. And what's in it is truth. And if he calls you a king, then you're a king. If he calls you a Christian, if he calls you... I remember back in the 80s when I was preaching, uh, I was preaching on the fact that we were saints. And, and I said, how many saints do we got here? I had about three hands go up. I mean, people just couldn't comprehend they were a saint. Well, how many know you're a saint? Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus has made you a saint. He has made you as white as snow. Glory to God. And he's made you a king. He's made you. Matter of fact, it says he made you a lord. He's Lord of Lords. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, well, now you've gone too far. Well, no, Jesus did. He said, you know, a king decrees the word, but a lord takes ownership. Uh, we don't understand that, but you know, a, a, a landlord, uh, that's about, about the best we got over here in this country. You go over to Europe, you go over to England, they got the House of Lords, they got. Lord Bannister, Lord this, Lord that, you know. Uh, if you own any land, you're a lord. Well, uh, here, all we got is a landlord. And so we don't understand that. But how many know that God wants us to take the land? He wants us to begin to rise up and know that there, there is an area of dominion where we go forth and take ownership. It's time to take ownership of Murrieta and Temecula and all the cities round about for... Jesus, hallelujah. And so, so when you read that, you, then you begin to go forth and understand, understand how you function. You are functioning as a Christian. You're not functioning as a heathen. Just, you know, sheep trying to get by till we all fly away and hope, you know, we get into heaven, slide into home plate, and the archangel Gabriel says, safe. <laughs> by that much. <laughs> no. You're already seated in heavenly places. You're already the children of the Most High God. If you're born again, your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. You have life, life more abundantly. Matter of fact, Jesus said it this way. He says, the enemy has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you would get to heaven. Doesn't say that, does it? He said, I have come that you would get real religious. No. He said, I came that you would have life, and that life more abundantly. Hallelujah. God's trying to give you life. You know, my daughters, i got two daughters, and I want them to have a good life. I want them to have good jobs. I want them to have promotion. If, if they're sick, I, I want for them make them healed. Uh, you know, I, I, I want them to have a good life. I want them to ha not have a poor life. I want to have, have an abundant life. How much more does our Heavenly Father want good things for His children? Amen. God has something good with your name on it this week. Come on. There's something that you're about to speak forth out of the Word of God. It's about to turn things around in your life. The devil's day is up. That little chihuahua, come on. I liken the devil to a chihuahua. I, I see him like a little chihuahua dancing around on his hind legs. He's got a little pink tutu on like the ballerinas wear. You know, somehow it got shoved up around his neck. He thinks it's a lion's mane. He's going around like a roaring lion. It's a chihuahua. Now, if you have a chihuahua, I'm not saying he's a demon. We have a chihuahua. That chihuahua thinks he's tough. I want you to know that the devil's teeth were pulled out at Calvary. <laughs> Hallelujah. We, we, we're talking about a, a toothless chihuahua with a pink tutu around his neck. <laughs> and there's coming a day when we'll look at him and we'll say, this is the one? This is the one that tormented us all our lives? 
This chihuahua? That's what the Word of God says. Well, the chihuahua part. Uh, <laughs> This is, there's coming a day when we'll look at that, you know, and we'll say this, this little, we were, we had the power. We had the anointing. We had the word of the living God. And we allowed the enemy to lie to us just like he did to Eve. How many know that he hadn't come up with a new, you know, way of doing things? He just does the same thing. All the more fear between your ears. You wake up and tell me how awful you are. How it's not going to happen. How it happens for everybody else. It's not going to happen for you. Well, how many know that God loves you? Amen. I love my children. If I told my daughter, uh, I'm going to take you to that new restaurant up the road. I told both my daughters, Let, get, go get ready. We're going to take you up to the, that new restaurant. Well, Dad, we, we don't believe that you would take us to that restaurant. I said I'll take you to the restaurant. Well, you might bring the kids down the street to that restaurant, but you wouldn't take us there. Are you serious now? I'm a man of my word. I said I'm taking you to that restaurant. Well, we'll just see what happens. <laughs> Forget it! <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible. Please go without faith. You can't, you can't be going around saying, I don't believe you, God, that you're going to heal me. or that, that, that. No. You say, I'm going to stand on your word, Lord. I'm going to stand on your word. I'm going to stand on it till the cows come home. I'm, I'm Texan now. Glory to God. There's only two types of people, Texans and those that want to be Texans. I had a steak out here the other day. Go to Texas. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Amen. Turn with me over here to Romans chapter 15. We'll wind this up. I, was that clock correct? Somebody. No. Now you're going to fall asleep back there. And you, he said, I'm going to tell you when you got five, ten minutes or something. Oh, 15. All right. How many found Romans chapter 15? Romans chapter 15. And... Uh, Go down here to verse 13. I love this verse. Now the God of hope. Aren't you glad he's the God of hope? You got hope today. I don't know what you're going through, but you got hope. Because you serve Jesus Christ. Yahweh Yeshua HaMashiach. You got to do that. Not Jewish. You go. Amen. <laughs> Got to get it right. Glory to God. I love Hebrew. I love the Hebrew. Uh, you got, uh, in the Hebrew, it's the most perfect language. I believe that it is the language of heaven. It has uh, something like 42 different aspects to it. Each letter has a number. Each letter has a color. Uh, it, you know, the number is mathematically correct. Uh, each letter has a symbol. I mean, you can, you can read the Word of God in the symbols and understand it. Come on, somebody. Absolutely awesome, the Hebrew, when you get into the Jewishness of it. Praise God for you Gentiles. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> uh, he's the God of hope. Now, hope is the seed. Hope is literally the DNA of the seed. You see the tomatoes. When you see the miracle, when you see the finances coming, when you see... Your loved ones coming to the Lord. When you see it, hallelujah, you're in hope. Now notice what it says here. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy, number one, joy, number two, and peace in your believing. You don't believe yet until you have joy and peace. Joy and peace, is t it tells you literally. Uh, it goes on to say, so that you would abound in hope or you would accelerate the seed. So if you want to have something come about from the Word of God, you're hoping for something. You, if you don't have joy and peace in it, you are not believing yet. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, so if you, you know, <laughs> I've had people come to me, Brother Backer, will you join your faith with mine that I'll be healed? Now, I won't say it, but I'm thinking, how can I join my faith with yours? You don't have any. 
<laughs> Why? I'm, I, I'm a fruit inspector. Don't tell me I'm judging. I'm a fruit inspector, and this guy's fruity. <laughs> I mean, just, oh, me, oh, my. That's not faith. It just means you haven't seen it yet. Once you already see it, you're going to get happy. <laughs> More than happy, you're going to get joy. And that joy, oh, joy unspeakable and full of glory. When you see the answer, when you see the, the, the freedom, when you see the deliverance, when you see the victory, oh, glory to God. Well, the victory hadn't happened yet, but I see it. <laughs> it's on the way, glory to God. Whatever that thing is that you're waiting on, it's on the way. It's on the way. Why? Because God is faithful. So joy and peace, you just get a peace about it. Oh, yeah, it's it's, it's going to happen. How many know that when you got saved, the reason you had faith is because you had those two things? You had a joy in your salvation. And you had a peace that you know that you know that you know that you are saved. Come on, somebody. Well, uh, same thing for healing. It's the same word in the Greek, uh, sozo, it's soteria. It's the same word in the Greek to be saved or to be healed. It's the same thing to be delivered. It's the same thing. It is being made whole. So when you get that joy of your salvation and you have a peace that you know that you know that you're, you're saved, it's the same thing in healing. You've got to have a joy. Glory be to God. I don't care what the doctor said. I've got a good report. And that report is the report of the Lord. And I believe the report of the Lord. And the report of the Lord says, I'm the healed of the Lord. By his stripes I was healed 2,000 years ago upon the cross. I'm the healed of the Lord. Hallelujah. And suddenly you got this joy that you're healed and you got a peace. Yep, I'm healed. Glory to God. It doesn't matter what the doctor says from that point on. Doctors are only there to give you the testimony of the victory. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God for doctors. Don't run from doctors. Well, you know, I don't want to go to the doctor because I'm in faith. No, you're in fear. You're fearing going to the doctor because you think he's got a bad report. Well, let me tell you something. You already have a good report. But you've got to get in the Word. Faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the Word of God. You've got to read the healing scriptures to the point where you have a joy about it. Where you have a peace and then nobody's going to steal your seed. Come on. It's the job of the enemy to steal your seed. It says the fowls of the air come in immediately after you hear a message like this. Immediately the fowls of the air, demons, come in to steal the word. Why? So we will not come to harvest in your life. It's time for you to have harvest in your life. It's time for you to have something good. Hallelujah. It's, it's, it's time for you to have a reason to wake up in the morning. Hallelujah. Joy and peace will accelerate your harvest. Joy and peace will cause you, literally, uh, some translations say, to abound in hope. I want to abound in hope. Abounding in hope. God's trying to give you hope. He's the God of hope. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what the enemy says to you today. You've got hope. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. You're blessed going in. You're blessed going out. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. How many know you have the blessing? Come on. You have the blessing of Abraham. I had it first. The blessing of Abraham. You have the blessing. You have the blessing. Now, you're not cursed anymore. Quit acting like it. You're not cursed anymore. Well, is it all about blessing? Well, yeah. We have now been redeemed to the point as if Adam never sinned. And he was blessed going in. And he was blessed going out. Hallelujah. So he was blessed. Not under the curse yet. And you're not under the curse anymore either if you're born again. You have been redeemed from the curse. That makes you blessed. Amen. I've had people come to me. Well, Brother Backer, I, I, I don't believe in all that bless me stuff. Well, what do you believe? Well, I believe we should just be blessed a little bit. <laughs> so what you're saying is you, you, you should be half blessed and half cursed. Yeah. Does that even make sense? <laughs> but you, you really have to have a bunch of people preaching religion to you to get you to a point where you think 
It's about only Maranatha and getting to heaven and not being born again and not realizing you have a covenant whereby you rise up and you've been made different and people see Jesus in you. And when you speak, things happen. And when you lay hands on the sick, people recover. Let, let me tell you something. It is time for the church to rise this hour laying hands on the sick. I believe this is the greatest hour of the church. I believe you are those that will usher in the second coming. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. It says John the Baptist was the greatest prophet of the Old Testament. Well, that's wrong right now. He was in the New Testament. Just be quiet and don't show your ignorance. No, he was part of the Old Testament. He brought, he ushered in Jesus. He ushered in the New Testament. It is said that you are greater than John the Baptist. Oh, hallelujah. He ushered in the first coming. You will usher in the second coming. Hallelujah. Things are getting dicey out there. Come on. There's a, there's a whole lot of darkness going on out there. There's all kinds of things going on in the world. Don't find yourself asleep in the last days. Don't find yourself on the sidelines. Get in the game. Realize you were born for such a time as this. Realize you were born to rise up, not in your words, but His words. Not in your power, but His power. Not in what you can do, but what God can do through you. Come on. Glory to God. God's about to do great things through your life. Well, I'm just so unworthy, Brother Backer. Quit spitting on the blood of Jesus. Well, I, I just, I don't think I, I, I can do anything. <laughs> you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Well, I just wouldn't know what to say. Holy Spirit will give you words to say. Well, I'm trying to come up with another excuse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, just, just, just begin to say, Lord, you wake up in the morning. Lord, I give you praise and honor and glory. I don't get out of bed until I preach myself happy. I do. I preach Praise God, worship the Lord. I ask Him, put me in the right place at the right time today. Let me just flip the Holy Ghost today. Let it. Yeah. Now, I know some people say, Holy Spirit, I do. But sometimes you just need to say, Holy Ghost. Anyway. <laughs> Sounds better. I don't know. And, and, and just, just flowing in God. But you got a day out that way. I remember there was one guy, a famous man of faith years ago. Uh, he, he, would, he would dance before the Lord. Smith Wilkesworth. He'd dance before the Lord. He'd get up out of bed and dance before the Lord. I realized it does not work without coffee. Come on, somebody. <laughs> A lot of times you hear things about these great men of God, but they don't tell you the details. <laughs> you, need, you need to realize God wants to use you. So quit telling him how you're not worthy and let the blood of Jesus cover you. Let the blood of Jesus that has paid every price, let it cover you. And let the word of God be in your mouth. Joshua says, if you get in that word both day and night, you will prosper and have good success. It's time for you to get in the word. Well, what will you have good success in, Brother Backer? The word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whatever word you're working is going to begin to prosper and have good success in you. Come on. And then you will be blessed. Blessed going in. Blessed going out. Blessed in the city. Blessed in the field. Blessed in your body. Blessed in your possessions. Blessed in the store. Come on, blessed in the store. Come on. <laughs> blessed in the outlet. I saw one over the way. Blessed. Come on. More shoes. Glory to God. <laughs> you notice it says, and blessed in the basket. That means you're not window shopping. You got a basket. <laughs> Your storehouse overflow. Well, how can you say that? I'm quoting a scripture. <laughs> Deuteronomy 20. That's the blessing of Abraham. You're going to be blessed, blessed. Everything you set your hand to from now on shall be blessed. It's time to rise up in the word of the living God and be a king. For there is power in the word of a king. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the word of God this morning. I thank you that it it went forth to the best of me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are speaking to the lives of the people here. And they understand there's power 
in the word of the living God. And when they begin to speak the word and not the problem, they'll begin to see the results of the good news of Jesus Christ in their lives. Maybe this afternoon here you'd say, Brother Backer, I, I'm not sure whether or not I'm born again. I, I need to know. Well, let me tell you something. There's a blessed assurance you can know. You can know that you know that you know. You can know that your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. If you're not sure, I'm just going to say a quick prayer. If that's you, slip up your hand real high. Slip it up. If you want Jesus, if you want to know you're a Christian, if you want this joy I'm talking about, slip up your hand. Slip it up. I see your hand. Maybe this morning, you know, a lot of us to come out on a Monday or Tuesday. What is it? Wednesday. My goodness. When you travel, there's the only thing. Uh, <laughs> to come out on a Wednesday afternoon, you've got to be pretty strong in the Lord. Come on. But I'm going to ask you today. I'm not going to ask you for a show of hands. I'm just going to ask you to examine your hearts. Are you living for Jesus? Are you in his word? Is the word of his power rising up inside of you? And are you in anticipation of great things in your life? Today is the first day of the, na- oh my goodness, first day of the rest of your life. And something great is going to happen this week. Something good is coming to you. God is watching over you and he loves you. And it's, it, it is high time to get in his word. I pray for each and every one here. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you died in our place. We repent of our sins. Lord Jesus, come into our hearts. Be our Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, for those that are here and they're born again, I pray that each and every one would rise up in the Word from this day forth. That they'd realize there's power in the Word. That they'll realize that they'll go forth in the Word of the living God And experience and expect the promises to be yes and amen. I pray the blessing over each and every one as a man of God in this place. In Jesus' name, amen Amen. and amen.